in a French bistro, so beautiful. A titan of the Milwaukee restaurant scene. I grew up at a table, it was always about food. Says his fine dining empire started. While I was in Italy, I would write my brother. With an idea, nearly 5,000 miles from home. We should do something together. I'll do the back, you do the front. 31 years later, his brother Joe is gone. I miss seeing him. I miss being around him. But Paul Bartolotta is still showing the world how Milwaukee chefs can hang with the best. We have not done our best work yet. From the Fox 6 Studios, this is Open Record. I'm Brian Polson, and I'm joined, as always, by Open Record's executive producer, Sarah Smith. Hey, Sarah. Hi. And we have a special guest today. We are joined by Fox 6 News anchor Stephanie Grady. Stephanie, thanks for coming aboard Open Record. Oh, thanks for having me. It's great. I, it's not like you haven't been in the studio before. I mean, That's you know, true. conventional wisdom many, many times. If you haven't seen conventional wisdom, it was great. The convention's over, but they were great episodes. Um, we are recording this episode on Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. It's been a big year for the Milwaukee restaurant industry. First, the popular reality cooking show Top Chef spent a whole season in Milwaukee. And then the Republican National Convention brought 50,000 people to the city, many of whom experienced the culinary expertise of our local restaurateurs. And at the center of it all was Milwaukee native Paul Bartolotta. Stephanie, I know you sat down with him one on one. We're going to talk about what you learned from that experience right after this. If you ask anyone their list of the best restaurants in Milwaukee, especially fine dining, you're almost certain to hear at least a couple of names on that list belonging to a single family of restaurants. The Bartolotta restaurants have become a Milwaukee area institution over the past three decades. Steph, you sat down with one of the founders, the larger than life figure, Paul Bartolotta. First of all, tell me a little bit about how that came about. Uh, what was the purpose of this interview and, 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 and how did this come to be? So we sat down at their newest venture, the Commodore, which is out on Nagawicka Lake in Heartland, just opened a few weeks ago. I highly recommend going there. It is beautiful. And I didn't eat there, so I can't speak towards the food. I'm sure it's great because, of course, it's a Bartolotta restaurant. Um, but we sat down with Paul because the RNC was coming to town. We knew that hospitality was a big piece of this whole thing. We had had the mayor on Conventional Wisdom talking about how he had been working with the hotel industry, the restaurant industry, just making sure Milwaukee put its best foot forward when 50,000 people came to town for the Republican National Convention. And on top of that, the finale of Top Chef was happening right around the same time in June. And so we know that Paul Bartolotta was really instrumental in bringing Top Chef to town. Argino Salamone goes way back with Paul Bartolotta. So he and I were talking one day. And Gino goes way back with everybody. He does. Right, he's right. definitely a name dropper, but he's yeah. got some good names on yeah, his list. He sure does. Yeah. And so we were brainstorming and just kind of discussing the idea of let's do a sit down. Let's kind of talk about this family. They've been through a lot over the last several years, obviously with the death of Joe, COVID impacting their industry so much, uh, still continuing to do so. And we knew that they were starting on some new ventures. We also knew that they were planning like crazy for the RNC and everything that was going to come after that. So we did the sit down and Paul was Lovely. I expected it to last 30 minutes, the oh, interview. This is my favorite part. 98 <laughs> minutes 98 later. 98 minutes. Yeah, it's your favorite part, but when the photographers uh, and editors look at the... Yeah. Because I think Tanner, uh, who shot this, uh, our photographer Tanner, shot this video with you. He used multiple cameras. Five. So five yeah. cameras. Because we wanted to look good. It's, and it's minutes. hard when it's just, I mean, this is a little inside baseball, but when it's just two people, you want it to be visually appealing. Mm -hmm. So that's why Tanner used several cameras, GoPros, whatever. But going through 90 plus minutes that, that's of Tanner Hemker for you. He'll yeah. shoot five, yeah. five cameras oh, on absolutely. anything. And it looks fantastic. But, but I just thought of the amount of material he had yes. to work with after that. That's but but it speaks to what you I mean, you must have found an engaging right. interview to talk for more than an hour and a half. We could have kept going. I mean, yeah. honestly, but I knew that Paul was doing one of his soft openings that day. They hadn't officially opened the Commodore yet. They had people coming into the restaurant, friends, family, other, you know, past employees and whatnot, kind of doing their soft opening. So we knew he had to go, but he would have sat with us there probably for five hours if we wanted to, just mm -hmm. talking about everything from his life to what he wants for the future, to what he wants for his staff, the stories, his time in Vegas. I mean, we really covered it all. We're going to cover some of it here. You know, what I, here's the thing. I'm not what you would classically call a foodie, right? I mean, I, and I know there are people who are really into it. It's, it's not my like forte. This isn't my strong suit. But when you talk about Milwaukee and food to someone who doesn't live here, mm -hmm. the first thing people say, oh, it's the cheese, it's the brats, it's the cheese curds, it's the beer. And I feel like 
Milwaukee sometimes doesn't get the credit until maybe this year, the credit for being a home of such great culinary expertise. I mean, some of the restaurants we have here rival much bigger cities. Mm -hmm. and, and I think people may write Milwaukee off as just a beer and cheese town. And it's so much more than that. Without a doubt. And it was interesting when we were talking, Paul and I, you know, he's been a chef forever since he was 16 years old. He started working in the restaurant industry, went over to Italy, trained over there, of course, opened a major restaurant out in Vegas at the Win, which was just like second to none. Um, so he's had a lot of experience, you know, back in the kitchen and being a chef. And he's got a lot of chef friends because of that, because he lives in that world. And a lot of his chef friends were like, wait, you have 17 restaurants in Milwaukee? How, how do you have 17 restaurants in Milwaukee? And Are it's there like, 17 yeah. total restaurants? Yeah, someone <laughs> right, outside, right, yeah. right. that many in Milwaukee? It's like, yeah, yeah you right. should come visit and you should see for yourself. Well, but the thing is too, and I think about this, is that, you know, there's some restaurants that are like, oh, we're going downtown. And downtown is like the, the big appeal, like put it downtown. Not Bartolotta. Mm -mm. They're in Lake Country. They're on the North Shore. Tosa. They're, they're Tosa. They're literally in Tosa. Yeah. Southeast Wisconsin is is it. And so it's definitely not just a oh I have to go downtown to They're go to one the of these. They're at the airport, which is amazing to me. When <laughs> right. you talk about going to the airport, you think I'll get a chili dog or something. Yeah. And there's these fantastic restaurants <laughs> right at Mitchell Airport. Yeah, they they really have created quite uh a legacy here in Milwaukee in their, you know, 30 years. They celebrated their third, 30th anniversary recently. And in the restaurant business, that is forever. That's forever. Yeah. To be that successful for 30 years and to have so many different establishments and surviving COVID that so many restaurants, even massive institutions like the Bartolotta restaurants fell because of that. Mm -hmm. But they were very strategic. They stood by their employees. Of course, there was layoffs. Of course, there were shutdowns. Of course, there was all of those sorts of things in order for them to just stay in the black a little bit. And they're still recovering from that. And Paul will tell you that and how devastated he was having to let go of certain people and be like, look, I promise we'll bring you back. I promise stay with us. You know, we have to do pay cuts. We have to do whatever we can in order to survive, but we'll get you on the backside, which, and he's followed through on every single one of those promises, he says. So I want to do, I, you know, I always try to do my prep. You guys know that before ever I, I come on the show. So it makes and, you so good. And one of the things I wanted to, to, to do is I, I, I know a lot of these restaurants, but when you talk about 17 or whatever, what are these restaurants? If for someone who's listening, goes, well, what are you talking about? Um, it, it, this goes back to 1993. The original was Restaurante Bartolotta mm -hmm. in Wauwatosa. Still there. Yep. Has had a refresh on its 25th anniversary, uh, but, but still there 31 years later. At Lake Park Bistro, which came a couple of years later, um, which is on that you know, beautiful park pavilion yeah. overlooking Lake Michigan. Classic restaurant. Frenchy. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. French cuisine. Restaurante Bartolotta Italian. Um, Mr. B's, a steakhouse, mm -hmm. Bartolotta Steakhouse in Brookfield. Um, then Pizzeria Piccola. I, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I'm sure I'll be correct. That's later, a good guess. Good, OK. <laughs> have, uh, Neapolitan Pizzas in, in Wauwatosa. Bacchus, obviously, yeah. a, a phenomenal restaurant mm -hmm. um, downtown Milwaukee. Then there's catering that begins the Discovery World and the Grain Exchange. North Point Custard comes into Bradford Beach. You've got all the different uh, restaurants at Mitchell, Mitchell Airport that come in. This is around 2009, and it keeps going. Every year or two, there's another restaurant. Mm -hmm. Harbor House, the Rumpus Room, which is no longer open. Joey Gerard Supper Club in Greendale. And it's not all the same style food. That's it's not the like thing. all it's Italian. Such a it's variety. Not, it is. Yeah, there, I mean, there's fine dining, there's yeah. casual. But what I really notice about that is year after year, every one or two years, there's a new restaurant mm -hmm. of some kind in some place. The expansion continues. But then you hit around 2018 and there's 2017, 2018, and there's a long period without a new place until now. Until now, the Commodore. It seems like that makes the Commodore a really big deal mm -hmm. for, for the Bartolotta restaurants. I'm assuming that, and I don't know this for fact, and maybe our guest, when we talk to him in just a little bit here, um, he can kind of clarify things for us. But I'm assuming they had something up their sleeve in 2017, 2018. But what happened in 2020, right? right? It's like right. all the projects go out the window. The focus on is on just surviving. Um, and I know that the Commodore has been a passion project, and this has taken many years. It's not like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this six months later. They get things going like this was a major overhaul of I think it was the seven seas restaurant out on Nagawika for, Lake time, yeah. for many yeah. years complete overhaul of that space but at the same time keeping the charm of it so that was a huge project and yeah like you know that just opened but that was the most recent one and like you said it was after a, a big lull but we, you, I also think about you know Paul Bartolotta himself and, and what he's done for the Milwaukee sort of food community 
with bringing Top Chef mm -hmm. to Milwaukee, yeah. what a coup Huge get. to get that show here. Uh, he's been on the show many times before, right? He was, as I think, judge. first yeah, as a right. judge, like yep. way back Other in, like, cities, I don't know, yeah. 2009 or 10, something like yep. that. So years ago. But then you talk to him about this. How does it go from, yeah, I've been a judge on this show to we're going to do this in Milwaukee. Yeah, and how did he convince them to bring it here? I thought it was really interesting. So we talked a lot about this. Obviously, only a short part made it into the piece uh, that aired last night. This that's is why we have the podcast. I was going to say, that's why Open Record is so cool, because we get to go deeper on all of this sort of stuff. But he said he knew all the people, right? He knew all the big players, right? From production people to the hosts to the judges, all that sort of stuff. And... You know, there was ideas that were starting to float around. Oh, maybe we should do Minneapolis. Maybe we should do Detroit. Maybe we'll sprinkle in a little Milwaukee, a little Chicago, something like that. And he was like, no, no, let's just do Milwaukee. And they were like, wait, wait, just Milwaukee? And he's like, just Milwaukee. They're like, well, I don't think we can just do Milwaukee. Season? We need to I do mean, like a Midwest yeah. kind of a feel. He's like, no, no, we will deliver just make it Milwaukee. And so he went to the governor's office. He uh -huh. got the governor involved. Obviously, the mayor of Milwaukee was very involved in this. Visit Milwaukee was huge and all of this sort of stuff. Um, and so all the big power players just came together. They united and they said, we're going to make this happen. And they did. And did you guys watch the season? It's wild. I, I wish I could tell it's you that amazing. I did, but I don't have Peacock. And yes. I would hear everybody talk <laughs> about right. it. I'm like, it, yes. well, I'm still, as we sit here today, I'm still going, I'm going to watch it. Yes. I am going to watch it. And I feel, I almost felt, I feel guilty coming on this podcast, not having seen the season. Well, I had never seen Top Chef before I watched this season, but going into the interview, I was like, hmm, I probably should watch Top Chef, don't you think? Everyone was talking about it, yes. right? But I mean, I don't have, like like you said, I don't have cable, so I'm not watching it on Bravo, but mm -hmm. I ended up getting it, so I was able to watch Top Chef. Um, it was spectacular, and it wasn't just Milwaukee. Yes. They brought in Dane County, the Cherries. They did, a, or not, excuse me, not Dane County, um, up in... Uh, the, Door, Door, County. County. Door, County. Door County, excuse Door me, County. the other D. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were they did a whole segment about the cherries. They did uh, a ton of stuff out in Madison. They did a whole s episode about hops and incorporating hops into yeah. all the different dishes and things like that. It was really creative how they really showcased, yes, Milwaukee, because that's where the focus was, but all of Wisconsin to make us not just a cheese curds and beer mm -hmm. state. And we were talking about what to title this episode because we often do we're like what's the title for this mm -hmm. and one of the suggestions i had made i bet maybe it was too flippant but was beyond cheese curds because as i said that whole idea that that's what milwaukee right. is or that's what wisconsin is this is the realization for everybody else that it's so much more than that that this restaurant industry here is, is vibrant and and can compete with the best of them. do you guys have a favorite bartolana restaurant well i you know for my uh my wife's 50th birthday yeah um, I have a great story about Restaurante Bartolotta because it's it's a great restaurant and I, I love it. But um, I don't know if this is like, I guess I have to admit that I did this. I took my wife for her 50th birthday as a decoy to go out to dinner because we had a party set up at the house. So we go out to a nice restaurant and I got there and I had made the reservations for the wrong day. Oh, no. oh Brian. <laughs> and I left my wallet at home. Oh, Cool. So the, Here's the, an IOU. <laughs> well played, that's my friend. That's that a big one. was so fantastic. They found a way under well, the Well, they were fantastic until they found out you didn't have your wallet. No, no, no. That was my I'm wife's fantasticness. <laughs> she, she went ahead and paid, and I had to pay her back. Uh, she, but, but no. But so I, I took my wife to a great restaurant and said, "Hey, here you go. Buy yourself dinner." Uh, <laughs> But but no, they they, they they found a way to get us in. It was a phenomenal experience. And I think because of that experience, that's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, that's, I mean that's the original. That's the OG. Yeah, I'd like um, uh, Mr. B's. We celebrated my 40th birthday there, and it was we did it just instead of throwing a big party. It was like my mom, my husband, the kids, his mm -hmm. parents, um, and it was just super intimate. And it, they put us in kind of a back corner, and it didn't feel like isolated. The food was phenomenal as everyone's eating you know their steaks and all the sides that was the other funny part is that they like my mom got a side of some potato and then a side of carrots or something each side it wasn't just like a scoop it was like an entire vat of like share things. this with the table that's, yeah that's what it was like and she's like i'm never gonna eat all this so it was a lot of leftovers but i'd say for me that was probably it. and you brought your purse for that one too. obviously yeah. Well, okay, I just, yeah. oh to all put right. the carrots in we, but we are gonna, i want to take a break because when we come back it, it hasn't all been sunshine and roses no. right and right. and obviously the, the maybe the darkest chapter in in the company because of the family uh history occurs in 2019 and we're going to talk about that plus the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic when we come right back.
So by 2019, the Bartolotta Restaurants has expanded beyond Milwaukee to Greendale, Brookfield, Mequon. It's catering for Discovery World, the Grain Exchange, the Italian Community Center. There are restaurants at the airport, the lakefront, the U.S. Bank building, even the Coles corporate campus. And then tragedy strikes. This all goes back to Paul and Joe, brothers, starting this project 31 years ago. I loved in the interview how Paul said he called him from Italy and said, um, you do the front, I'll do the back. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do the food. You run the business. Joe passes in, in 2019. He's a business guy. Mm-hmm. That was obviously a huge blow personally for Paul, but I imagine also for the company as well. He was so vivacious. And that's what Paul just expressed to me was that. I mean, Joe, in the beginning, really had no experience when it came to restaurants. I mean, he was into cars and vans and all that sort of stuff while Joe was training in Italy, right? Or excuse me, while Paul was training in Italy. And so, but Paul kept writing him letters like, let's do this restaurant thing. Come on, let's do it together. You know, you do the front, I'll do the back. I'll take care of the chefs. I'll take care of the cooking and the meals and the the menu planning and all that sort of stuff. And finally, Joe said yes to that whole thing and they got the venture and Restaurante was born and all that sort of stuff. Um, But, you know, with his passing, Paul says what he misses most about him is just seeing him and being around him because he was just such a lovable guy. So many of us in the media have had a chance to interview Joe, to be with Joe. I mean, his Harbor House has served as the backdrop of our fireworks broadcast for so many years when the U.S. Bank fireworks used to happen down on the lakefront. And so a lot of us know him, obviously not as well as Paul does, but we he's so charismatic and he just was the life of any room the second that he walked in. And so his death put a big hole in the Bartolotta restaurants, company, family, everything, right? And people felt that. But Paul felt at that moment that, look, we're not going to let this thing go by the wayside. Somebody needs to step into the spotlight. Nobody knew who Paul Bartolotta was, right? He was Mm -hmm. never the guy out front. He was never the guy giving the interviews. He was always the one in the back, right? And he liked being in the back, but he's very much taken a step into the spotlight. He has embraced it. I think he's doing a spectacular job. He's just as vivacious as Joe was. I mean, he was walking us around the restaurant every, he knows everybody, you know, he's talking to everybody. Um, But he can still feel Joe with him every day, right? He still has that kind of like Joe in his ear telling him like, "Ah, you shouldn't do that. Uh, uh, like, what, would Joe, should... what would Joe do? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, what would yeah. Joe do? Yeah. yeah. That's 2019. And then I think you, you've had this big blow to the company, the family, and then the following year, the COVID-19 pandemic, mm-hmm. and that just obliterated the restaurant industry. It oh. was so difficult with so many of the, the, the shutdowns. All 17 of the Bartolotta restaurants had to shut down at one point, mm-hmm. and some of them never came back. Um, did he talk at all about the, the COVID impact and, and what it's been like trying to recover from that ever since? He said he is so happy Joe wasn't around to go through that because of the decisions that had to be made, the, you know, bad things that happened. And, you know, Joe wasn't in the greatest of health. And so for him to have to go through that health-wise and that emotional roller coaster and the stress and all of it, you know, as much as Paul misses Joe, of course, he says, I am so happy that he wasn't here for that. You know, he's like, I'd give anything to have him here today, but I'm just so happy that he didn't have to live through that. And I could have, that I just, he basically just swallowed it and dealt with him himself. Um, But, You know, in the interview with Paul, I said, look, you have so many accolades. You have so many awards and you've opened so many restaurants and you've done so many things. Are you ready to kind of just kick your heels up and be done and just kind of sit back and relax? And he was like, I don't think that anyone, if you're not in the industry, if you don't understand what COVID did to us, we are not in a place where COVID is not having an impact anymore. Demographics have changed. The customer base has changed. The customer spend has Mm -hmm. changed, right? And so he's like, I'm not... This is not the moment for me to step back from the company. He's like, we have more work that needs to be done. Yes, he loves it, but also because it's a necessity. I I was thinking that too, that that, that, you can't gloss over the yes, he loves it though. Mm -hmm. Because for some people to to think about living a life that's been so immersed in the restaurant industry and spending so much time in the kitchen and then going, step away, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I want to do more of this. It seems like he's really invested in in continuing to grow the company and, and to do what he's doing. 
Well, I mean, his wife and his daughter lived in Italy for a really long time. She was in school there and everything. Um, And even when he was out running the restaurant at Wynn, I mean, so he would be at Wynn for so many days, then he'd fly to Italy for 10 days, then he'd fly to Milwaukee and stay with either Joe or his sister Maria for a few days, you know, just to make sure everything was going good there. And so he was kind of like a jet setter constantly, you know, when it came to um, all of his various ventures. But yeah, I mean... This has been part of his life since he was a teenager. You know, his dad asked him, hey, you know, what do you want to do for college? And he's like, look, dad, I know you're an academic, but that's not really my thing. I love restaurants. Like he just loved the vibe of the restaurants and just how chaotic it was. Right. And he's like, I want to be a chef. And his dad said, "Okay, go ahead and do it. And so he's been doing it ever since. So I think to step away. Yeah, that'd be a piece of him missing. But I feel like all of us at some point, you're going to have a time where you're like, "Eh, it's probably time to step away, you know. But for Paul, that's not today. Well, and then to to your point about, you know, him walking through the Commodore and saying hi to everybody. And you don't always get that. I feel like with, you know, if you run a lot of, you know, either a large business or many restaurants where you can say, hey, Steph, hey, Brian, hey, Kelly, you know, and, and actually you know every name, no people and mm-hmm. not and not just your, you know, your upper management colleagues, oh, no, or, dishwashers, right, right, yes. right. And so it's just like everybody. And so that's that definitely says something about him and the family and just the industry that he's so passionate about. Well, what was so interesting to me is when we were walking around the Commodore and he gave us a tour of the Commodore and that place is enormous. It is beautiful. They have a banquet space up top where they have weddings and different events and things like that. Then the main restaurant is on the main level. And then underneath they have a private members only club that's not yet open. But when we were walking around both upstairs in the event areas, he's showing us the bridal suite and all that sort of stuff. He's showing us the bath. He's knocking on the women's bathroom. Like, you got to see the bathroom. You got to see the baby changing area. You know, and he's bringing us in there. And then do you know what he's doing? And I'm looking out of the corner. He's wiping off the toilet seat with a piece of toilet paper because there was a drip on there. He he is yeah. in every nook and cranny of making these places as spectacular as there are. So he's not above anything. Right. Yeah, you know, you know he's wiping down the saying, toilet. As he's walking through, do you know all the other staff is saying, boss is coming, boss is coming, clean it up, clean it up, come on, straight yeah. up. What was out of 98 minutes, mm-hmm. what surprised you the most? Was there something that you were like, wow, I didn't expect that? Or, or, or maybe something that you wished you could have fit in the, the interviews that we put on TV that, that you couldn't? The whole thing. I think how much he could speak. I would ask him one question. He'd go on for 20 minutes, you know, um, without taking a breath, without blinking, you know. Um, I think it was he kept bringing up Joe. He kept I I didn't bring it to the table at first. I was going to kind of let him to see because I didn't know where he stood on that. I mean, obviously, it's a tragedy that happened within his family. I wanted to navigate that slowly to see if he would kind of bring it to the top, which he did over and over and over again. And you could just see just how much love he has for his brother and how much what exists today is because of what he and his brother have done together. What's next for the Martin Lauder restaurants? And we've talked a little bit about that, right? Like what's coming next? What else should you know? We have a special guest. And after the break, we're going to be joined by Keith Trapton, CEO and managing partner of the Martin Lauder restaurants right here on Open Record after this. So we have talked a lot about your one-on-one sit down with Paul Bartolotta. He is not the CEO of Bartolotta Restaurants. That title belongs to our guest who's about to join us right now here on the show, Keith Trafton, CEO and managing partner of the Bartolotta Restaurants. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Good to, good to talk to you. Okay. You've been listening to us for, you know, 20 plus minutes uh, <laughs> as you've been listening. What did you hear? What did you notes? want to jump in and say, <laughs> yeah. I want to correct well, I that. I want to add know. to that. <laughs> what do you think it is you're listening yeah, well, first of all, it was a great recap. Uh, Paul is so passionate about um, everything we do here. He's passionate about what's going on in this organization. But there's a couple couple fill in the gaps, if I would. You know, you had mentioned in 2017, 2018, we were a little quieter. Remember at that time, we were also doing management contracts. So we were working with the Phoenix uh, Hospitality Group in Wauwatosa over in the Mayfair Collection. And we're also working in Madison at the Edgewater Hotel. So we're starting to broaden a little further outside of the brick and mortar, if you will, of the business and expanding and helping others in, in our in our industry. You know, the other thing I think of as I reflect on the moments you, you've talked about the beginning, Joe's passing and, and the past. To me, there's three days that will forever sit in my memory. Today's 9-11, so obviously I think all of us 23 years ago, we can think about where we were in that moment. 
<clears throat> but April 23rd of 2019 was one of those moments which will always be in my memory. And you had mentioned earlier that Paul was in Italy and he learned of, of Joe's passing. And so I had a 45 minute head start of everybody as to how to absorb this information. And I remember bringing everybody into a conference room at our old support office, which back then was over by the Pfizer forum. Brought everybody in and all of a sudden Paul appeared on the on the screen. Back then Zoom or was the only way to, to communicate. And he had the daunting responsibility to share the way that Joe passed. And and Paul and Joe and the entire Barlock family are very emotional. They are true belief people. So as he's clearly articulating what had transpired, uh, to hear this full gasp from everybody in the room was that piercing sound I'll never get out of my mind. Uh, and then crying because I, I think uh, that you mentioned earlier, he's, he's, Joe was just a person you thought of love. You thought of someone who just loved you, loved our community. So where I look at Paul's seat, clearly he was a culinary and, and an incredible business uh, operator prior, but he had to put his personal relationship aside, his love aside, and and help steer the team. So from April 23rd of 2019 until 2020, it was really a transition year. So I'd say we had two weeks before the pandemic hit, and then we went into that. But that, that's the, in the whole scope of 31 years, that's a, a, a small portion, but an important portion because ultimately in those times of trial, it comes back to who you are and how you operate. And Stephanie, you mentioned all these times we said, I've got to let you go now, but I'll bring you back. He truly has been true to his word. So mm -hmm. uh, I could be prouder to be associated with this company. I think one of the other interesting things too, you, Brian, you mentioned, you know, if there was something else from the interview that I wish we could have gotten more into, it was Paul being so gracious and appreciative of the help he originally got when he was starting from Joe to Rosa, right? The the money yeah. land. I mean, and that's it, money wasn't just the only thing. It was the mentorships and all of that and how Paul has carried that through with what he's doing and helping others. And like you mentioned, Keith, you know, helping out other people in the business and starting to expand the business away from just the restaurants and trying to help other people in the industry. I mean, Paul spoke at length about his passion about, you know, yes, helping his own people, but giving back because he was given so much in the beginning. Yeah, for sure. You know, we've had something called Carolata. That's our formal program where we give back to different areas in the community. We've done different galas to support different things. But the amount of giving, that's the transparent part, but the giving occurs every day. It starts with our team members. How do we give back to our team members? How do we train them? How do we challenge them? That's a form of love. And you probably saw that during your tour. He was coaching people through that little wiping of the toilet. Now, it wasn't necessary for you. But he'll do those coaching moments. We do those coaching moments. That's an expression of love. It's not a critique. It's, hey, how can we do things a little bit better? And then how do we give back to our community? The, um, when I think about the, uh, in particular, the Top Shop, you know, the focus was not on Bartolotta's, although we had some opportunities there. And RNC, the focus was bringing up and elevating the community to where it should be. The, you had mentioned earlier, people think of uh, the Fond and they think of Laverne and Shirley. We have so much to build on this city. We have so many great things going forward to us. So those things really help us. And I think that's also a way of giving back to the community. How much does that, something like that season of Top Chef being here do for the image of Milwaukee's food scene? Because I think for those who live here and who experience it, they know it's a game but outside of Milwaukee, like you said, maybe people think it is, you know, it's it's the Fonz, it's beer and cheese curds, it's not much more than that. What did that do for getting that image out beyond Wisconsin? Well, the story just began there, right? And it, and it again happens in the RNC. But I, I think it simply is level setting what people think. There's a lot of mid-sized cities in the United States, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Detroit, in some regards, is having an unrenaissance moment. And they're flyover cities. 
but our city is, has been or was a flyover city. More and more, it's saying, yes, we don't have the size of Los, Los Angeles or Las Vegas or New York, but boy, we have some really incredible talent, not only in the culinary, but look at some of the beautiful buildings, look at all the good things we're doing. We have some of the Fortune 500 companies in, in here in, in Milwaukee with Northwest Mitchell, you mentioned we do things with Kohl's. We should be very proud of who we are. We're not the stepchild to someone to the south of us by 90 minutes. We've got great things going on here. So the Bartolotta restaurants, obviously, you know, you are passionate about it as well. And everyone that has a restaurant probably thinks their restaurant is the best. So in your opinion, what sets Bartolotta restaurants apart from all the other restaurants that are out there? Hmm. Well, uh, I think Paul mentioned it in the interview with, with Stephanie. First, first of all, we focus on our team members. How do we build them up? How do we train? Stephanie, you were here, I think, on the second or third practice parties. We trained staff members for eight weeks, which is just an enormous amount of time. So first, we, we focus on those employees, because if you don't have employees doing the right thing, it's game over. We try to listen every day to our guests and anticipate what our guests want. And then we, we from there, we work on our business relationships and our community. The second element I think we do is we hit a three-tier bullseye. Number one, what's happening with respect to our our ambiance, our beautiful areas that we that we that we work in, whether it's Lake Park Bistro and partnership with, with Milwaukee Parks, Bacchus, our browser here. Second element we focus on is how do we have that service choreography, the dance of the of the day, if you will. And the third element we work on is really again that food and beverage. When we hit those three right in the middle, that's our value proposition because when you come with us, we understand you're spending a significant amount of, of money and we'll make sure for that money you get tremendous value. And I think the also other thing is we partner a lot with our industry. If you look at many of the restaurants within Milwaukee area, we've been blessed to have had those chefs and those restaurant tours work with us. So I think just learning throughout our industry is also important. Obviously, the Commodore is the big new thing. Mm -hmm. It's just opened there on Nagawika Lake. Are there other projects in the works right now, things you can talk about, or can you at least tell us there's there's new things coming? Where I, that, There uh, must be there must be brainstorming I all the time. I think my live stream <laughs> would be shut down if I shared, but I uh, have no doubt. I think Paul mentions that uh, we have not done our best, and we're super proud of what we've done. We're super proud of everybody's delivery and everybody's experience. Our focus in our organization is twofold. Number one, make sure if we have a guest that is so appreciative coming to us, whether it be a wedding or just a, a evening out, we need to focus on our team every day to deliver on our promise to them. So we cannot worry about the future until we deliver on our promise every day. The second element, of course, is how else can we expand what we do in different ways, uh, express different ways both within the Milwaukee community, because we don't believe we're done in Milwaukee. We believe there's other partnerships and stuff that we're working on, though yet again, help support uh, not only our business, our team members, but it'll support the community in general. And then yes, potentially beyond, you mentioned many times, Paul's worked throughout the world. We've had other relationships, uh, but our first focus, primary focus is if you're coming to our venue tonight, or if you have a wedding tomorrow, that's our focus. Make sure you have an incredible experience. I thought it was interesting when I asked what your guys' favorite restaurants were of the Bartolotta group. And both of you mentioned events in your life. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. That brought you to one of the restaurants, right. right? And so when I was speaking with Paul Keith, he was talking about how, you know, you guys have an obligation to deliver because that day might just be another day in the mm -hmm. restaurant world, another day of work for all these employees, but it's somebody's wedding day, right? That they're yes. gonna have photographs for the rest of their life. They're gonna remember for the rest of their life. It's somebody's birthday, it's someone's graduation. Maybe it's a funeral or it's a celebration right. of life. My grandfather passed away a couple of years ago at 98 years old. We had his celebration of life at the Harbor House. We rented mm -hmm. out that back room yeah. and had a spectacular time. And so it's interesting when it comes to restaurants, you know, so many of us, we attach memories to our experiences there, right? Big moments in our life. And Keith, you've been with Bartolotta for what, 16 years now? 
16 years yeah 16 years and what seems keep, like what, uh, seems like a day hasn't gone by but, <laughs> but 16 years what keeps you there hmm fall listening no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe I, I will uh, it's a fair question so i was in manufacturing before um and i thought you know i've got to do something a little different and i wanted to see what was it that makes someone feel happy or feel valued. And I thought, I, I'm gonna do something outside of manufacturing. And what I realized all my clients enjoyed going to a Bartolau restaurant. So I'm like, well, I'll call this Joe guy and find out if I get in there. And sure enough, we we hit it off. And Joe was Joe and Paul are both incredible people. But you know, 16 years there's there's a lot of ups and downs as you mentioned. We've had a lot of successes. We've gone through a lot of challenges. There's a few things that, that come of recent that really cements it. And, and I hate to reflect back on the COVID period, but that was something really the re, that resulted in me uh, significantly. So it is roughly St. Patrick's Day week uh, of 2020. And as all, we all know, that's when the world just continued to shut down. So we're in a, a, a room at the sport office and um, and it's tough, right? We, we just laid off, as you, you said, we had 968 employees, and then we laid off all but 12. Just a horrible, horrible day. And so Paul looked at me and said, hey, uh, you know, how, how much money do we have in the books? How, how long can we pay our employees before, before we, we go upside down? So we did the math. He said, we'll do it again. And we did the math again. And he said, okay, that's the day we're going to pay people till. Now, Anybody could have said, you know what, pandemic's here, we shut down, we're not going to pay anybody till we get on the upside. He, he chose the harder path saying, get to zero, we're going to pay our employees, and we'll figure it out from there. It, it, as I mentioned earlier, this is a moment where you take crisis and you define who someone is. That was the first of several times I'm like, wow, that was, uh, that's certainly putting other people in front of you. So you want to stick behind people like that. You want to help people like that. And you mentioned earlier about having special moments. We have really special moments, weddings, uh, different galas, and we have really important special nights. Maybe you just want to get away because the kids are crying and you got uh, you got a babysitter and you can all spend a, a night out. It's the one time a year you and your, your spouse can go out to eat. That's just as important for those people. But reflecting back on that pandemic period, when, when the pandemic hit, I think we had 245 weddings that had yet to be uh, transpired. And as you can imagine, all 245 families were calling saying, what's going to happen to my wedding? And the answer is, we, we don't know. But we'll deliver on our promise. Whatever that is, whenever that is, we're going to deliver on that promise. So we delivered on every single promise. We delivered on, on our employees' promises to them. So when you ask why, it's, it's those moments, right? It's those moments you say, wow, this is an organization that I want to be associated with, proudly associated with. And I think the same goes through with our business partners throughout the community. You know what I noticed? And for 31 years, I think that's what's, that's what's, the glue, the special glue that, that has brought us to this day. Well, what I noticed listening to that, Keith, is you talk about Joe and Paul being these emotional guys. You fit right in. You mm -hmm. speak from the heart. And we're really grateful that you've been here with us on Open Record. Thanks for sitting around listening in, and thanks for joining us here on the podcast. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Keith. Keith Trafton, CEO and managing partner of the Bartolotta Restaurants. We will go off the record when we come right back. And it is time for us to go off the record. This is the part of the podcast where we get a little more casual and have a little fun by answering a question for which we have not prepared, but Sarah Smith has because <laughs> I sure she have. has the question. I what sure do you do. have for us? All right. Um, I'll just keep asking questions until we fill the time. How about that? Uh, so we talked about food. Um, my, so my first question is, where do you find the best sandwich? A restaurant, a, a, a place that you like. What is the best sandwich? In Milwaukee? Sure. Anywhere. 
I mean, the best I'm an East Coaster. That's, yeah. And I have to say something. And maybe this is a little taboo. The deli sandwiches around here, non-existent. Oh, they Hot stink. They, <laughs> yeah. Hot. I always said that if I was, and I have nothing to do with the restaurant injury. I was a waitress <laughs> yeah. for two weeks until I was fired um, in college. Uh, this place needs a good deli like a good mm. jewish deli like from new york the city you gotta go to jake's jake's or benji's jake's or benji's i was, no. just, I was just gonna yeah. say the opinions expressed on open record not necessarily that it's a fox excuse well uh, they will be uh yeah. sponsoring us anytime soon <laughs> yeah, have, you, have you been to jake's jake's and jake's you get a um, pile a pile of pastrami I'll tell you yeah that. Okay. i don't want to knock anyone in particular so i'm just gonna knock them all um <laughs> equal opportunity but uh yeah that honestly i mean granted i love sandwiches i mean anytime i go to a restaurant it's like usually a turkey club for me that's like sure. my go-to um but a good italian hoagie oh okay. doesn't exist here Ooh, and if you don't know what a hoagie right. is it's a sub for all of you yeah. non-philly yeah. people yeah 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 <laughs> I, you know, you would say best sandwich. I think like it's it's got to probably be something spectacular that you know that stands out. But but I don't go to spectacular places very often. So I'm going to tell you like uh, one of my favorite places to go for a sandwich is actually and I'm now the name's going to escape me. Cool. It's it's uh, hang on, hang on. Uh, it's in Menominee Falls. It's right over by the Costco and all that. And they hey, you get a little strawberry, the chocolate covered strawberry with your meal. I can't think of the name of it now. It'll come to me. Well, I, I mean, gosh, cousin subs. <laughs> There's just something about actually that it. sounds familiar. The strawberry <laughs> thing. Yeah, I know. And now I've got to actually Google, Google this, it. Literally, as we're on, on open it? record. Well, how about while you do that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what's the most used app on your phone? Most used app. Yeah. I want to say Fox Local or no or Fox, Fox Six Fox Six uh, News app. You're such a company. Uh, right? How do you find no, that out? No, it's uh, 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 I don't know. Well, which one do you always open up your phone and what's Facebook. the first thing you click on? Instagram. It's Facebook. Say Instagram, yeah. Yeah, or the camera. Oh yeah, I don't forget that's like an app. Okay, I mean, what do you use it, a lot? Really? It's probably the camera. Yeah, okay. camera and Instagram. You're such okay. a photographer. Yeah, I would uh, say yeah, Instagram. No, so you're Facebook, well, okay, Facebook and and uh, and, and now it's the TikTok. app for my car. Oh. Oh, you're one of those jazzy. Um, see, I have the app on my phone for my car and I haven't even like opened it or signed in. <laughs> right now, like I can see. <laughs> it's there. I'm like, the, it's... Inten the intentions there. Yeah. I can see where my wife's going right now. She's driving 63 miles an hour. What? And Dude, I can... no. Stalker. No. <laughs> no. I just look at my husband's text. You can open up their text and if they have their location on, then you can yeah. track them. I did that the other day. I had an MC walk for wishes on Saturday oh, yeah, yeah. and I'm standing on the stage, like waiting for him. And my parents happen to be in town with my three kids. And I was like, okay. And the parking was weird. So I'm like watching him on the app, like texting him in between <laughs> like takes on the microphone on the stage being like, okay, hey, okay. He's getting closer. Oh no, he did a U-turn. Why is he doing U-turn? <laughs> Yeah, you know what that happened. First of all, it was Cafe Zupas, by the way. Just oh, the okay. Cafe Zupas. Um, love their love their uh, panini. And by the way, uh, roasted red pepper soup, phenomenal. Oh, um, right. or maybe no, that's lobster that's, bisque. That's Larry's. Uh, Larry's I'm sorry. has roasted red pepper. I'm sorry, soup. you're okay. right, Larry's. It's the lobster bisque is fantastic. Okay. But but anyway, you're talking about the tracking people around. Yeah. We were uh, we were doing the Juneteenth parade, you know, as a station, right? Yeah. All mm -hmm. over there. And this is one of my favorite, favorite things that happened. Uh, Derricka Williams was with us on the on the. Uh, uh, you know, we're in a, all in a van trying to get back to wherever we started the parade, right? A van's taking mm -hmm. us all back and her daughters were with us and we had been walking through the parade. One daughter, one, daughter. One daughter was well, one okay. son. Too. One, it's, that's right. One so, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. The, but yeah. the, her children are with us. So yes. her, her daughter's in the car. Her husband is home apparently watching us walk through the parade because her daughter has the phone, sees her going through the parade. And then all of a sudden, because we're in the van, sees her phone going really, really fast oh. in the opposite direction. <laughs> He thinks her phone has been stolen or oh, she's been no. kidnapped. So oh, he calls no. Derricka. Concerned, and no one's answering because the, the van is loud. Yeah. We're all talking. She, oh, he finally no. gets a hold of her. He's like, is everyone okay? And she goes, what are you talking about? We're fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so We're a little hot, but yeah. The dot, and he noticed oh, it going gosh. really fast. Yeah. Wow. Know, tracking he people, tracking people can like serve you in a bad way yeah. too. You yeah. know, it can like invoke anxiety yeah. unnecessarily. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently so. But had she been kidnapped, you would have been on top of it. Wow. Um, That's all we know. What's your least favorite smell? Olives. <laughs> Olives. Uh, old, old, old cauliflower. That's been Whoa. left in the refrigerator too long. <laughs> Gone. Done. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I guess anything that's not right yeah, and, and well, rotten, but like, like if it's not rotten, olives. <laughs> See, and I, okay, I like bananas, but I hate the way they smell. Really? I hate the smell of the peels. Really? It's not, Worse yeah. than poop? I mean, you said uh, worse smell. I mean... <laughs> 
You did We're say. taking bodily functions out <laughs> anyway, of the equation. Yeah. I took away oh, all the like you stuff that's supposed worst, to be gross. Yeah. You didn't yeah. say worst food smell. Anyway, all right, we got to take a break and wrap it up, and we come right back. All right, we've got to wrap it up, but it was cumin, right? Cumin. It was, I, well, I cut it off where we got that one. Anyway, if you have a topic you would like us to discuss an open record or an issue you think we should investigate for Fox 6 News, send us an email to fox6investigators at fox.com. As always, thank you to the people who make this podcast possible. We're just going to say thank you to everyone. With that, I'm Brian Paulson. We'll <laughs> that way we don't forget week. anybody. Yeah.